This was a fantastic week for new comics. I cannot wait to review these books and discuss my top 10 list with you. Something is Killing the Children is back with a brand new arc. ASM finally wrapped up its volume and there were so many other good ones. Let's jump right into it. So I hope you all are having an awesome day and you were able to pick up all of your new comic book day issues on time. Overall, this was a fantastic new comic book day. I really enjoyed almost all of these issues. There's a couple I really didn't like, but overall, definitely a solid week. And as always, just be aware as I start to talk about these books, I get really excited. There's definitely going to be spoilers, but I'm going to put a little spoiler tag down low to give you a heads up once I get a little bit more in depth with the review itself. So if you want to hear any spoilers, just mute it or skip on to the next one. But to kick this list off first, we've got coming in at number 10. This is Marvel's Hulk issue number five. This is cover A. I know I've talked about it all the time. I keep hoping it gets better. But honest to God, I'm really not enjoying this series so far. I really don't think it's all that good. Maybe I'm hoping for more of a story. I keep holding out for that sixth issue. Everyone says that's going to be the big first appearance. That's going to be the game changer to the series. And deep down, I want to like this series. I want to love the Hulk, but the story is just not there. The artwork is fantastic. And other than waiting for the sixth issue, and they made a comment about the ninth issue as well, that you need to stick around for this because something's going to happen. I don't know if I can make it that far but man the action panels the gore the violence everything that's going on with the different hulks and everything with i'm not going to be getting too in depth with it but the spider in this one it was very cool but the story itself is just severely lacking in my opinion i want to hear your opinions on this one down low but for those reasons we've got hulk issue number five coming in at number 10 and next up on my list this week, we've got coming in at number 9, this is Marvel's Miles Morales Spider-Man, issue number 36, this is cover A. In my opinion, I felt like this issue was a letdown. I had very high expectations, I was really hoping for a, just a solid overall issue after the cliffhanger they left us on, but... Maybe it was just me having high expectations, but I really didn't think it was all that great of an issue. My problems with it was, was that in the last issue, the cliffhanger, Miles found out that his uncle was alive. So they were going through the portal, and that's where I kind of was hoping, well, maybe they're going into the multiverse, they land on some other world, and they're just looking for his uncle the whole time. Instead, the issue itself seemed more like the Spider-Verse series, the last one that Miles Morales was in where we had the first appearance of Spider-Zero, it felt more like that. They went into Western times. We had the Rhino, so there's a little bit of action. Black Panther was kind of also in there too. And then we met up with Spider-Ham, and I don't know. I was just hoping for more of a plot-driven, we're in this multiverse now, and just let's find the uncle instead of hopping around just like the Spider-Verse series was. But still, not a bad issue. It wasn't what I was hoping for. I think the next issue is going to get it a little bit more on track. But for those reasons, we've got Miles Morales Spider-Man, issue number 36, coming in at number 9. And next up on my list this week, we've got coming in at number eight. This is Marvel's Hulk Grand Design Monster, issue number one. I had extremely high expectations for this one, mainly because I'm not enjoying the other Hulk series at all. And then after I finished that issue, I thought, please, Grand Design, just redeem the Hulk right now. Before I get into the issue... The quality of this book was fantastic. The paper quality, which reminds me, I didn't even bring it up with the Miles Morales issue. I don't know if it's just me, but was that book made out of tissue paper? That quality was absolutely horrendous. I spent $4 on that, and every time I touched a page, I felt like it was just going to disintegrate or rip in my hands. This one, definitely worth the $5.99 price tag. It felt like I got my money's worth. I really enjoyed the artwork. I love the style of it, however... I'm putting it at 8 mainly because the story itself to me was extremely lacking. I think there's an X-Men Grand Design series out that I didn't read at all, so maybe it was just me not knowing what I was getting into with a Grand Design series. To me, this was kind of more of a history lesson on the Hulk. It jumped around to a lot of short stories. Not bad by any means. It was the artwork and just the quality of the issue itself that really dragged me in and kept me reading it. But still, at the same time, I felt like it was a little bit of a struggle to read it too. I don't know if it was just me, but still, definitely check it out if you're a Hulk fan. I think it's just my opinion on this one, but I'll tell you what. Seriously, the quality of this one is way above and beyond anything else Marvel has put out right now as far as just a book itself. But for those reasons, we've got Hulk Grand Design Monster issue number one coming in at number eight. So now that we got those three issues out of the way, this is where the list really begins to shine. I was a huge fan of these issues and they were very hard to put in order. But now we've got coming in at number seven, this is Images, A Righteous Thirst for Vengeance, issue number six. This is cover A. This is a series I've been extremely back and forth on. The artwork is all right. The story itself to me has been very off and on. Some issues I loved, the other issues I thought, man, why am I still reading this one? 
This was the issue that I've been waiting for. This is the one that really pulled the story together. It started off a little odd and I thought, all right, this is going to be another issue that I don't really care about. And I think this is actually going to be the issue where I officially drop it. But it got into a backstory. We learned about this character and we just kind of learned about where he is right now, how we got into just the business that he's in and so much other stuff. This was a very informational plot driven issue that really pulled the story together. I loved it. I'm really excited to see where they go with this one now. And before I said, I don't know if I really suggest it, maybe wait for a trade paperback because you can blow through these very quickly but man I'm telling you this is the one that hooked me right back in everything that they were describing about this character you saw what his life was where it is now and just how he feels about everything we saw some other characters too how they interact with each other Let's talk about this one down low. I really did enjoy this one, but for those reasons, we've got a Righteous Thirst for Vengeance, issue number six, coming in at number seven. Next up this week, we've got coming in at number six. This is Images, Radiant Black, issue number 13. This is cover A. We've got the start of a brand new arc. I thought this was a fantastic issue. It was a little bit slower in the beginning, but I really like how they just built up our main character. I don't want to talk about what happened to him and kind of what led him to being where he is right now, but it kind of picks up after a few issues ago. I love what they did with just the Radiant Red series so far. We had a little origin story of, I believe it was the Radiant Pink character, but this was a more plot-driven issue. It's back on track. And the beginning, like I'm saying, is a little bit slower, but he was basically just catching up on everything that he's missed out on this entire time. So we got to see the characters interact with each other. We got to see him and his best friend and just kind of see a little bit of tension growing between them. But as the issue progressed, we got to see some new villains and just a ton of action. And the way that we got left on that cliffhanger, just incredible issue. I'm so pumped to see where this one goes. But for those reasons, we've got Radiant Black issue number 13 coming in at number six. And now we're down to the top five issues of the week. Before I do reveal this fifth issue, super quick, if you are enjoying the video so far, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down low. It really does help out. And I am doing an omnibus giveaway at 8,000 subscribers. So while you're down there, you might as well get subbed up too. Who wants to miss out on a free omnibus? So coming in at number five this week, we've got Marvel's Iron Fist issue number two. This is cover A. Now, before I get into the issue itself, I really like the first issue. I really like the second issue as well. I like the artwork. I like the pacing. I like the dialogue. I like the action. However, I have talked to a lot of people who do not like either of these issues. They don't think the series is good, and they're going to be dropping it. I said, why don't you give it at least a third, a fourth issue? And they said, no, this is not very good. My opinion on that is, is while I do think this is a very good series so far, if you don't have a lot of knowledge on Iron Fist or just the background of Iron Fist, you may feel a little lost in this one. Because to be honest, I don't really know the Swordmaster that well. I don't know a lot about Iron Fist either. And they're referencing a lot of stuff that I just have to look up. And that's simply what it is. I don't have the knowledge, but I look it up and it makes the story a little bit more enjoyable. Like, okay, that's what they're referencing. That's what's making sense. But once you get that out of the way... The series is fantastic. The pacing, the dialogue, the action, these feel like very complete issues. I felt the first issue was very complete too. We got our Swordmaster becoming the Iron Fist. They said how he became Iron Fist for people who didn't read the last Swordmaster series. Continuing on into this one, we're meeting a lot more characters. They're not really liking the Swordmaster right now, mainly because he is the new Iron Fist and they feel like they should be the next Iron Fist. But that aside... A lot of good stuff is going on in this series. I want to hear your opinions on this one down low because I do have very high hopes for it. Like I said, there's a lot of things that I really do like about it, but I think the reason why other people may not like it, including myself a little bit, is because I feel a little lost. If you just don't have the background knowledge, you may not really feel too interested in this one because you have to do a lot of research. Just my opinion. I want to hear about it down low, but for those reasons, we've got Iron Fist issue number two coming in at number five. Next up this week, we've got coming in at number four. This is Marvel's The Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 93, the giant-sized series finale. This is cover A. No, it's not the Gleason variant. Didn't grab it. You guys already know I'm a big fan of just getting cover A. And the way the series has been, I wasn't really even looking forward to this ending. The last few issues have been terrible. The tie-ins have been terrible. It started off so good. I loved what they did with it. We've got Ben Riley. He's trying to just do all of this good stuff. He's got some cool gadgets. Peter Parker is still recovering behind the scenes. Beyond Corporation was just up to some shady stuff. The buildup was great. And then all of a sudden, it just turned terrible. We got Peter Parker, Ben Riley. They're teaming up to take down the Beyond Corporation. I thought that was cool too. 
everything with the Queen Goblin felt very just meaningless and pointless. And then all those weird, stupid, cheesy villains that they had at the Beyond Corporation felt pointless too. So all of that build up to this issue didn't really mean anything. The beginning of it was so much better. Maybe if they teamed up to actually take down the Beyond Corporation, because that's what I was looking forward to. Instead, this is where we're going to have the spoilers. We've got Ben Riley. He's kind of changed his mind, and he's looking to take down Peter Parker, and he's just like, I need my memories back. I need me back, and that means you got to be out of my way. I need you to give me these memories, and just, I don't know. I did not like that at all, but overall... I thought it was a very good issue. The volume, extremely skippable, including the Spencer stuff, but I'm just strictly reviewing this issue. I like this one in particular. If they had a better buildup, I'd say this volume was fantastic. But that aside, I thought the issue was very well done, and I'm really looking forward to the next Amazing Spider-Man series. But for those reasons, we've got ASM issue number 93 coming in at number four. Next up this week, we've got coming in at number three. This is Images, New Burn, issue number five. This is cover A. I absolutely love this series. I think it's fantastic. They're doing an incredible job with it. This is definitely one of my favorite ones from Chip Zdarsky right now. This issue in particular, I've talked about it before. I might be a little biased because I've done a lot of work with the criminal justice system. And now we've got New Burn, this detective, and he's in the prison system. So it hits a little home with me. I really love this issue though. We've got Newburn. Like I said, he's in the prison system now and he's basically just trying to survive. But at the same time, he's still gathering intel. But he sees all these people that he put into the prison and they're just trying to get some revenge on him. We meet a couple new characters and this was a really fun issue. We got left on a little bit of a cliffhanger. Nothing too crazy. But man, I have high hopes for this one. I hope they continue on with this one for a long time. I'm a big fan. If you're a big fan of it too, let's talk about it more down low. But for those reasons, we've got New Burn. And issue number five coming in at number three. And now, folks, we are down to the final two issues of the week. We've got coming in at number two this week. This is Marvel's Ghost Rider. Issue number two, this is cover A. I absolutely love this series so far from Marvel. I know it's only two issues deep, but the artwork is great. The pacing of the story is great. The entire vibe of this series right now feels completely different than almost anything else that Marvel has on the market right now. It's dark. It's gritty. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of gore. I've got insanely high hopes for this one, and I know I try to keep my expectations low with a lot of Marvel series, the newer ones, but I'll tell you what, every time I pick up one of these Ghost Rider issues now, it's like, man, what are they going to throw at us? I won't be getting too in-depth with this issue itself because, to be honest, not a whole lot of stuff happens. We've got our main character, Johnny Blaze. He's still trying to distinguish what's real, what's not, and he's just trying to handle a lot of his inner problems right now. Basically, from the accident that happened in one of the last volumes... It's really messing with him, but I just love how it goes from him being in just the present time, like in the now, to just everything turning into this hell scenario. It is so cool. I want to hear your opinions on this one down low. I actually haven't talked to anyone who doesn't like this series so far. I feel like it's just been a nice consensus of, yo, this has been fantastic. Definitely check it out. It's so much different than anything else Marvel has on the market right now. But that's honest to God my opinion on this one right now. But for those reasons, we've got Ghost Rider issue number two coming in at number two. And this is it, everyone, my top read of the week, and I know you already know what it is. We've got Boom Studios, Something is Killing the Children, issue number 21. This is cover A. All of the covers are fantastic for this series, but man, this was an awesome issue to return on. I absolutely love it. Now, I'll tell you what, though. House of Slaughter, I'm not a big fan of that series. If they basically stop making that one right now, we all forget it exists. I'm cool with that too. We've got our crown jewel of Boom Studios back. This is a series I truly am obsessed with. I collect all the covers when I can. I just love it all. This first issue, they didn't skip a beat. They jumped straight into it. We got our brand new character. She seems really cool too. She seems like a very Erica Slaughter light, just a badass little character. And we just basically learned a little bit about her, what got her into that situation. We got some other first appearances as well. That's kind of the entire issue. We don't learn a lot. Nothing really major happened other than just setting up the new arc in the story. But this is going to be a spoiler. Once we hit that final page, we saw her. I had a big smile. Erica Slaughter, she made her appearance. And ah. Oh. I love this series. Boom Studios. This one really is phenomenal. Let's talk about this one down low, but we've got Something is Killing the Children. Issue number 21 coming in, taking the throne absolutely at number one. 
So what do you guys think about this week's new comic book day? Overall, fantastic week. Something is Killing the Children is back, and it was top notch. I loved it. Ghost Rider, New Burn, such a phenomenal week. Even the issues that I wasn't a huge fan of outside of Hulk number five, I just, I can't get into that one. Miles wasn't bad. Grand Design wasn't bad either. Incredible quality issue. I wish it was a little bit different of a story, though. But I want to hear what your opinions are. I want to know what your favorite issue of the week was. Which ones do you think I missed out on? Let me know down below in the comment section. And if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really does help out. And if you want to miss out on any of my upcoming content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and the little bell to get notified. Every time I drop new content, you won't regret it. And I've got two more videos sitting off this side here with more of my comic book content. Click on one of those, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.